Insightful podcast by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 64, Rise of the Recipes. <laughs> I'm, Joseph, funny. I'm Joseph Whalen, your host, and my brilliant and energetic co-host, Michelle Whalen. How are you doing today, sweetie? Good. I'm on a sugar high because I had my donut. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to come into this show so that you're full of energy and life. Yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with that. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with Madison on our Insights in the Teens. I'm going to ask you how you're holding up under quarantine. This is how many weeks in now? Uh, this is the end of week seven. Week seven. And the so. only reason why I know that is I actually write it on my little work calendar. So. Wow. I can keep track. So this is the end of working from home, uh, week seven, basically being, you know, in quarantine. The only places that I have gone is to uh, pick up groceries. Really, that's right. that's about it. Um, during this whole week, uh, this whole seven week time, I've only had to get gas once, which is. <laughs> Quite the cost saving. <laughs> but then again, how much we're spending on, on food, um, you know, because we're eating, you know, three meals a day, right. you know, at home every now and then we we do get takeout. So we are supporting our our local uh, establishments. So you're holding up at home. You're foraging periodically. It's like an episode of The Walking Dead. Really, it is. You know, it was funny because we got to the point where we were doing grocery pickup for our normal, our regular groceries. But then uh, we have an Amish farmer's market that's not too far away. And I was physically going into that location, right. you know, every I wasn't going every week because in the beginning I didn't go at all. Uh, last week we I didn't go. Uh, this week we actually did curbside pickup, which was the first time we had done that, and that went really smooth, so no having to go in for that. Uh, this week our, our regular groceries, just like uh, last time we ordered, we're actually having them delivered so we don't right. actually have to go in. So we're minimizing a little bit more uh, our interaction. So in that case, it's, you know, the weather's starting to get a little bit nicer, so it's nice to actually, you know, be outside. But, you know, I'm missing seeing people, yeah. you know, other than <laughs> us. Um, but there's a, a woman's group that I'm part of, and we've done a couple of Zoom meetings, so that's been nice to, to see on a screen. Um, later tonight, I have a, a Zoom meeting with some family, um, so that'll be nice. And, you know, fortunately I'm still working full time, um, busier than, than normal for this time of year. Um, so I do talk to my coworkers, um, you know, during the week every now and then. So, so it sounds like you're, you're, you know, consi all things considered, you're, you're hanging in there pretty yeah, well. Yeah. And, and you know what? I have my ups and downs, you know, there are moments where, you know, I just want to cry, <laughs> yeah. you know, and there are others where I'm like, you know what? We're healthy. We have a roof over our head. Our refrigerator and our pantry is stocked. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of folks out there that are far worse off than we are. Yeah. So, you know, it's just when, you know, and, and this was one of the things that I had even um, brought up in w one of my, you know, women's groups is because of the, the type of job that I have, it's very analytical, um, you know, and it's very, you know, uh, uh, timeline oriented, you know, right. it's like, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. So for me, not knowing when 
this is going to end. It's so open ended. Sure. Yeah. That's, I think, you know, when I start thinking about that, that's when I kind of, you know, go a little crazy because I need to know when is it going to end, you right. know? Um, you know, we pretty much know they haven't said it, but we know school is more than likely not going back um, the end of, you know, for the end of the, the school right. year. There have been so many other states um, that have already canceled, you know, going back um, until September where, you know, our school, we're one of the last to actually still be in school. So it was almost like, well, maybe for at least the last, you know, month, they'll at least get to go back to see, you know, their teachers or, or whatever. So yeah. as of right now, we still don't know. So that's kind of disheartening. Um, I know for us, the, the summer camp that our daughter normally goes to, they're still planning camp for you know to start june 22nd where i know there are some other camps um more located you know like the new york or or north of here that they've actually canceled they're not even doing camp yeah so you know it it, it makes it kind of hard yeah. you know when you think that way but you know i think you have to kind of be in the moment you have to just day by day wake up get a shower get dressed, Absolutely. you know, do some things. And, you know, for some people just getting up in the morning is tough, Yeah. you know? So, you, you know, like I, I see all these people, Oh, I want to do all this crafts and I'm going to, you know, do this and I'm going to, you know, organize my closet and whatever, you know, and I really don't have the free time during the week because I am, you know, just like yourself, we're working, you know, full time. So, really the big difference is just not going out on the weekends. Right. And I, I really do take the weekends besides doing, you know, the podcast and, and going and picking up groceries. I try to just relax and just let everything sure. be. And, and, you know, that's one of the things we tried to, to focus on with the podcast for mm -hmm. the last several weeks is, you know, ways to get through things, mm -hmm. ways to cope with it, yeah. ways to distract yeah. yourself, ways Absolutely. to entertain yourself. Uh, and I think we have a lot of that uh, today as well. Yeah, and I think that's what's been kind of nice is that the entertainment community realizes, okay, if you went to conventions, if you went to movies, if you went to concerts, you know, all these things that we normally do this time of year. Because I think it would have been different if it was the winter time where right. not a lot of these things go on. Everybody's usually staying home because it's too cold to go out. But because of the time of year... That's what's making it harder for people. And I think I got to give props to, you know, all these different celebrities that are doing all these online things that, you know, they're being more visible in their personal life, yeah. you know, and sharing things, you know, that, that I think it helps to connect us all, really. Absolutely. You know? So let's get on with the show. Okay. So today in Disney Detective, we have some reports that... Uh, Disney may actually be saving the NBA season. Uh, then we will talk about uh, Florida and the reopening mm -hmm. of various businesses and the effect that's going to have on Disney World. Uh, and then we have an update on the Disney family sing-along. Uh, when does that actually land? Well, this is actually volume two. Okay. They did one a couple of weeks ago. And as we'll, you know, we'll talk, they decided since it was so popular, they're doing volume two. Nice. So whole new set of uh, songs and different um, celebrities to, to sing them. Awesome. Then in our Star Wars <coughs> Insights, we will talk about the rise of Skywalker coming to Disney Plus on May 4th, Star Wars Day. Uh, and then we have some Galaxy's Edge drinks that are surfacing outside of uh, Disneyland and Disney World. And then to go along with the recipes we've had right. for the last several weeks, you can now make your green milk and your blue milk at home. So we'll talk about that recipe a little bit later. In our entertainment news, AMC has declared war on Universal Movies. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, we will talk about, I lost my last one. Oh, uh, eligibility of streaming films in Oscars. Mm -hmm. Uh, just when we thought that, uh, 
that controversy had been right. settled finally. And then we will finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Um, sounds like a good show. Mm -hmm. Let's get on with it. Go for Disney Detective. So this is a story that, you know, even after seeing this one, they actually, uh, there were a couple of other ones uh, posted about the NBA that now they're thinking about even delaying the start of the season until December. So one of the stories that popped up was that the NBA was actually considering playing the games at Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando at Wide World of Sports. And this was something that, that we had talked about, um, that it, you know, it kind of makes sense. If you're not familiar with uh, Wide World of Sports, it's this big, huge sports complex that's at Walt Disney World. Um, usually, you know, during a normal, you know, day, um, you know, nothing's really going on there, but they do host... Um, uh, spring training for a couple of teams uh, play there. A lot of school, uh, you know, championships are formed there. Uh, they have many, many buildings. When it's uh, a marathon weekend, that's where uh, a lot of the uh, different activities are done. Not necessarily the running for the kids races. The kids races are done there because they do have a track. But when you go to pick up your bibs uh, or merchandise, that's all done there. So really, it's this huge complex, multiple locations to play, you know, multiple games at one time. Plus, you figure you could house you know, not only all of the players, but even their families, you know, you have so many different resorts, you could pick, you know, one resort per team, even, you know, and, and, you know, self isolate, you know, everybody. Um, so I know one of the, the rumors, you know, talked about that, you know, basically, every, you know, player would be tested, you know, anybody associated with the teams would have to be tested, they'd get there, they'd self quarantine for two weeks, you know, and then check everybody out, you know, before playing any games and just, you know, play the whole season, you know, from Walt Disney World. But again, they're still not, you know, nothing's been confirmed. It's just, you know, because they were talking about even doing this uh, in Las Vegas as well. You know, yeah. an area that has a lot of resorts, you know, and a lot of, you know, open space. But you could totally see Walt Disney World. Well, that's you know, the thing. I mean, Walt Disney that. World really <laughs> is their own little country in the middle of Oh, Florida absolutely. There. I could totally see being able to regulate mm -hmm. people that can come on and off the property. Right, right. Much easier than you could in Vegas. Right. You know, where people are living there. Right. Um but yeah, the the sports complex at Disney's World World of Sports is I was I've only been there once and that was mm -hmm. for the the 5K that you ran. Right. And it I was shocked. I, mm -hmm. I didn't realize how large it was. I didn't realize the facility capabilities mm -hmm. that they had there. Yeah. Um and it's it's an ultra modern sports facility. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like an Olympic training village. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's definitely. That's the impression you that I get when you yeah, show up. Yeah, and there. there's so many, you know, and we were only in so many buildings. Right, right. You know, we were only in a couple of them. There's so many more, you know, there. Plus, they have food, you know, capabilities there too. So, you know, so they could really, if they needed to, you know, do you know a basketball season? You know, in well, I mean, they could do. I don't. They think they don't have an ice hockey rink. I do. They? Don't think they do, but I'm not. I'm not really sure. There's, but you could probably get away with several sports seasons <laughs> right? there. Do it within a couple of months. And yeah. Just, so. Okay, we're done. So again, you know, it would be cool. You know, nothing set in stone, but. You know, I know for for people that are sports fans, you know, they're they're itching for for something. A so. lot of people are aching to get some kind of sports. I mean, there's only so many reruns of, of sporting events that, that right. you can watch on ESPN at this point. Right, right, right. yeah. So anyway, well, it'll be cool to see how yeah, that one so shapes we'll see. up. We'll see. Uh, next up, we have Walt Disney World and other theme parks, and what they'll need to do in order to reopen when Florida reopens. Yeah, so they they had this big, um, you know, meeting with the Florida's Economic Recovery Task Force, and you know, basically, it included members of Walt Disney World, Universal, Orlando Resort, trying to figure out, 
you know, ha what they needed to do to, to basically reopen. Um, so there were, you know, various different guidelines and mandates and, and things, um, you know, that were, were given out. So here's just, you know, uh, a, a, a few of them. So for the theme parks themselves, the guidelines would be tape markings of six feet apart in ride and attraction queues. Um, the staff are to regularly wipe down surfaces at random times. Um, phase one and phase two are that staff members who are 65 and older are encouraged to stay home. So they don't even want cast members that are, you know, older coming to work. Um, then employees or cast members are well, required at, at risk. At, oh, yeah. No, at risk. Not, right. No, they're not saying stay home because you're old. Right, right, right. So if you're at risk, so if you're 65 or older, right, or have any of these underlying medical right. conditions, right. Um, so cast members are supposed to wear face mask, uh, touch touchless hand sanitizers will be at the ticketing entrances and turnstiles, also before. And after every ride, um, temperature checks for the staff prior to a shift would be done, um, wipe down of railings and surfaces. And then they're talking about phase one would be 50% capacity um, and phase two would be 75% capacity. Um, and that's just for the theme parks. Then, you know, there were some guidelines for, for hotels. Um, housekeeping would be... Um, on a limited basis, um, basically promoting mobile check-in, which is you know something we were talking about before, basically not really having anybody at your front desk or very limited. Um, uh, all empl employees, um, <laughs> this was kind of funny, allow employees to work from home if not playing a crucial role in servicing guests. So if you're working in a hotel, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure how that would work. Um, deliver room service to guests' door, uh, not going in their room, uh, providing self-parking. Disney does have a couple of valet areas, but, you know, for the most part, it is already self-parking. Um, promote social distancing, hand sanitizers all over the place. Um, you know, again, everybody wearing face masks. You know, they were even talking that, like, you won't see um, the face Based characters uh, in the park, so you won't see like Peter Pan or you won't see any of the right. princesses because everybody's supposed to wear a mask. Whereas the costumed characters, they're you know already covered, so right. they're probably wearing something you know um, behind them. You know, and then talking about the sneeze guards, mini bars would not be stocked. Um, no self serve food options everything would be like prepackaged um pool spaces you know like at the pools the chairs would actually be 6 feet apart so you know so they're going to spread things out same thing with restaurants restaurants would be you know the tables uh you know 6 feet apart um paper disposable menus so that you know once you've looked at the menu it just goes in the trash uh, sanitizers at the table when you go into the table. So, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of work to get things up and ready, you know, plus you figure all of the restaurants, all of the pools, you know, they pack you in oh, they pack you in like, like sardines. sardines. So, you know, again, if they're only doing 50%, they can probably, well, you know, see, that's, manage you know, that. You and I were talking about this offline earlier. <clears throat> That, this is like the ideal time to go when you know that capacity is going to be limited. Right. But this isn't the time to go because you don't want to be the <laughs> guinea pig who's like, going to test this system right, out. Right, right, right. You know? Uh, and, and outside of the theme parks themselves, we all know that tourism itself is going to take a hit. Mm -hmm. Travel is going to take a hit right. from this. Um, and, and I commend Disney and the other theme parks for coming out ahead of time yeah, and trying to get ahead of the curve on this because people need to have some level of confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you have to know that the people that are hosting you mm -hmm. are going out of their way to try to make you mm -hmm. safe. Right. Um, I don't see us going back to Disney or another theme park anytime in at least the next 12 to 18 months. Mm-hmm. Um, not until all these systems are proven out, not until there's a vaccine available, not until right. there's some proper treatment. If you do contract this, right. this yeah. sickness, um, 
I, I just it, it's not worth the exposure. It's not right. worth the danger. Right. Um. So Disney's going to limit themselves to fifty percent capacity, mm-hmm. but somehow I suspect that the 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 actual tourists will impose that limitation. Right. Themselves. And and I could definitely see more of the local people going yeah. first. You know, like. Or somebody that doesn't have to fly, right. you know, because that's the other thing, too, is, okay, so when I get there, I'll be really safe, but what do I have to do to even get down there? Yeah. You know, yeah. fortunately for us, when we go, we drive, so we're pretty self-contained. You know, we stop off, you know, at rest stops to, you know, for a bathroom break, you know. Yeah, we don't and, bring a porta potty with us. And now it's going to be like, hmm... <laughs> Diapers for everyone. <laughs> Diapers for everyone. <laughs> Got the back of the van. We could put yeah. some. Uh, it's just so, gross. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll see how this works out. Yeah, you know, yeah. Florida uh, announced the governor of Florida announced that they're going to be starting to open up the state next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney has not announced when they're going to start opening. No, nope, nope. uh, but I think based on that decision by the governor, mm-hmm. they're probably going to reevaluate and put a date out there yeah. very soon. Yeah. So hopefully it will work. Hopefully it won't make the problem worse and people can sort of try to start getting back to a normal life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the meantime, Disney's helping us with their Disney family sing-along. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So as uh, we mentioned during the opening, they had done uh, the Disney family sing-along a couple of weeks ago. Um, Maddie and I ended up watching it. A couple days later, you know, on demand, um, and it was cute. It was it was neat to see, you know, various celebrities at home, you know, singing their little Disney heart out, and you know, doing little dance routines and and things like that. Um, so since it was so popular, uh, they had so many people watch it. They decided, oh, it was 13 million people across the nation watched the the first one um and it was actually on thursday uh april 16th you can actually find it on demand um you can find it on disney plus even um so it's there as well um so they're actually doing uh volume two which will actually come out on mother's day uh at 7 p.m and they listed you know all the different um uh, celebrities uh, that were going to be doing this one. Uh, what's kind of cool is, you know, uh, certain celebrities that did the original songs will be singing it, and certain original Disney songsters, I guess, uh, are doing different Disney songs. So people that you know that, you know, like uh, um, Adina Menzel, she's actually going to be doing with Ben Platt. A whole new world. So where you'd think you'd hear her doing Frozen, right. she's gonna you know well, see, do something I else. I see Donald Glover's in there. Is he, is he singing the theme to Star Wars? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hakuna Matata, because he was l- in Lion King. Silly. Um. So it's cute. So they have you know, uh, you know Shakira doing Try Everything, and that was uh, the song that she did for uh, Zootopia. Right. So kind of cool that they're doing you know doing that. Um, so it'll be, you know, it was cute. It was an hour long thing and they, you know, they have the words up on the screen with, you know, a bouncing Mickey so you can, you know, nice. sing along. Um, so again, it'll be on uh, Mother's Day at uh, 7 p.m. Um, and then uh, the following day, you'll be able to uh, watch it, you know, on demand or streaming on uh, Disney Plus. Now, are they doing it? Are they actually doing it live or is it pre recorded? No, it's pre recorded okay. from, from, everybody's house okay. you know um you know which is well a lot of a lot of these shows that are right. doing live broadcasts right they're really not are not really live right now. right they're they're just like we're well we're live unless you happen to catch us we're live yeah. right now <laughs> we're live right now unless right now is not right now and then we're not live oh my god when will then be now <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool well it's good to see uh good to see that Disney is still mm-hmm. kicking it up a notch to try to help people get yep. through this. Yep. And that was all we had for Disney Detective? Yeah, there were actually, a, uh, maybe we'll talk about them you know, next week. There are a couple more lawsuits that were popping up uh, with the poor little people mover. Oh, I love lawsuits <laughs> against Disney. So we'll, we'll talk about that next week, unless all something right. else exciting comes up. All right. So 
Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with Star Wars Insights. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So, tell us about what's coming on May 4th. Well, if you didn't already know, May the 4th is the official, unofficial Star Wars Day. <laughs> I guess, you know, I don't even know how many years it's been, but, it, it you know. So, to celebrate Star Wars Day, um, and May the 4th be with you, and, and also with you, um, Disney Plus has a whole you know, day planned of various different things. Uh, so first off is the finale of Star Wars The Clone Wars will be uh, airing that day. Um, also, Monday cel Celebration will bring the entire Skywalker saga together on streaming for the first time. So beginning May the 4th, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker will be streaming on Disney+. Plus. Um, also, they're going to be rolling out some other content, which we, you know, knew about um, that they're going to be having the Mandalorian special. That's going to come out. But the look of Disney Plus is going to be very Star Wars centric. Um, there's going to be some uh, Disney gallery uh, art that will be uh, focused. Very cool. Um, and they'll be showing uh, the, the concept art takeover um, plus, you know, some animated things where it'll look like you're jumping into hyperspace when you, you know, select something. Um, the one, there was another article that talked about it um, where a lot of the art was concept art that they showed at a uh, celebration a couple of years ago. Um, there was, I guess, a big display of, of various, you know, the, the original mm -hmm. artwork of, you know, C-3PO and things like that. Right. So they're going to do a whole little, you know, interface the makeover. The Ralph Macquarie yes. stuff. Yeah. yeah, so that, you know, should be kind of cool. And again, we knew Rise of Skywalker was going to be, you know, coming out sooner. And so perfect day to uh, to do it on. Does this mean I have to torture myself and watch it again? Mm hmm Awesome. I, I still look forward to it. <laughs> How many times have you watched it? I've not I've only watched it all the way through once in okay. the theater. Okay. Um I've not you know, I've I've picked it up, you know, here and there and watched right, it a little right. bit, but I still can't get all the way through it. Mm. It's like I watch it for a little bit. There's a scene here, a scene there, but right. it's like there's always a scene that comes up that makes me just want to turn it off. Mm. Well, and it'll be Monday, so you know it's a work week for you know work day for us. So it's kind of hard, to, you know, if it was something where it was I like really a should Sunday. should be off on Monday because it's a national. It holiday should. For me. Um, for you and walk around in your Darth Vader, you know, yeah. costume and mask. I think it would be perfect. So yeah, I should do that. You should. I should go to work like that. You sh I'm telling you. We were just saying that. You yeah. should. Because you know what? Nobody would be surprised. They'd be like, oh, look, there's Joe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, um, one of the things that we loved when we were at Galaxy's mm -hmm. Edge was the authenticity. Yes. And even the drinks that you would get mm -hmm. were authentic. Tell us about what's going on with them now. Yeah. So... When you go to Galaxy's Edge and you want to go get a Diet Coke or a water, when you would get the, the bottles, they would be these little thermal detonator-shaped 
bottles and even, you know, they weren't be written in English. The the labels would even uh, be authentic. In Arabish. And um, so, you know, obviously Galaxy's Edge is closed right now. Um, but um, some people were spotting at some local uh, grocery stores, I guess, probably local to, you know, the Florida area. Um that they were able to purchase them. Uh, so uh, there was somebody on Twitter um, who posted a number of images. Uh, actually, he was in Alabama. Uh, so they must have received a, a shipment of Coca-Cola products that were supposed to be obviously exclusive to the parks. Um, and he posted the the images, um, you know, saying that he went and, and bought, you know, so he doesn't know if, you know, it was you know, defective or, you know, um, you know, why they were even there. You know, you figure shelf life, you know, right. there's only so long, you know, the stuff can be sitting there. We knew Disney and uh, well, Disney World and Disneyland. I would think Coca-Cola has a slightly longer shelf life than oh. just a few months. Oh, obviously. <laughs> but we know that they were, you know, donating food, um, you know, to various you know, yeah, soup that, kitchens that and things like that. It so it probably, you know, ended up like, well, you know, we know they're going to be making more. Let's, you know, kind of sell it. Right. And, um, you know, and, and then they had updated a little bit later on that I guess they had bought like a case of it. And then when they went back like a couple of days later, it was all gone. So yeah. it wasn't like a whole lot. So you're probably not going to find it in your local target. Um, you know, but this was kind of cool that it, it was making, um, you know, its way out there. So well, what I think is interesting is when <clears throat> galaxy's edge first launched mm -hmm. and these products were available, mm -hmm. they were being flagged by TSA. Right, Cause we as, even talked about that as risks getting right. on planes. <clears throat> right. Um, so the fact that these things are being distributed outside of Disney. Uh, Disney is kind of interesting now. <laughs> yeah, thinking, yeah. you know, I couldn't even get on a plane with these things without getting getting in trouble. Right, right. Without emptying, you know, right. Making sure it was completely empty or putting it in your, you know, checked bag or right. You know. Yeah, and really, it's it's a it's a bulb right. of soda. Yeah, it's, and you know, it has a cog looking top mm -hmm. on the wheel, but it's a standard cap underneath of right, it. Right, right. Uh, and <clears throat> it's got, you know. Coca-Cola logos on mm -hmm. them. Yeah. The Coca-Cola, you know, the regular color schemes and everything. Right, right. They're just written in Arabish mm -hmm. and they look like hand grenades and that's what TSA officials right, thought right. that they were. Yeah. Now it was it's only the soda that is in the um that looks like the um grenades. The grenades. The water is actually a regular, you know, a little bit different shape than your normal water bottle, but again still you know, written and, right. and has that, that Star Wars look to it. So, yeah. so that'd be, that'd be cool. Like if we happen to find these, I'd, yeah. I'd love to get a, I'd never open them. Right. You know, right. Be nice to go, like, Cause we brought some back with us. Right. And we, they were ones that we drank, you right. know, so we don't have them, you know, so we need to kind of fill them with like sand or something right. to display them. Um, you know, but we did, I ended up getting them for a friend of mine for their, their children uh, for as part of a little Disney package because they were actually supposed to be at Disney a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, their uh, their vacation got pushed out, right. so I had put together a little you know Star Wars package. So I had gotten them you know a thing of soda as because it's a cool little. It is. You know, they're they're cool little souvenirs. Yeah, they yeah have. exactly. Uh, so besides besides soft drinks, we we don't you know Star Wars universe cannot live on Diet Coke alone, right? I love me some blue milk. Tell me how to make it. Well, this is actually the. There was one story that that came out a couple weeks ago, and unfortunately, we're just not in uh, the right part of the country. There is a Pennsylvania um, dairy farm that they, you know, uh, do chocolate milk and strawberry milk. They were actually coming out with blue milk, but it's like. Western Pennsylvania, like if you do a, 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 you know, a search like, ooh, within 25 miles, yeah, we're like 100 miles away for prepackaged, you know, blue milk. So I'm guessing their recipe is probably a little bit different um, than this one. So again, sticking with our, our recipes, this was one that popped up that you can actually make the green and blue milk. Now, when we were down there, we tried both of them. I personally thought they tasted the same. I couldn't tell 
the difference from this, but when you hear what the ingredients are, totally not the same, yeah, yeah. not the same drink. Um, so now again, I don't know if these are the actual recipes you know that that disney uses or if somebody just kind of came up you know with their own but what's kind of funny is that there's no milk in it at all right. and we kind of could taste that that there yep. wasn't blue yep. milk and you you know what looking at these ingredients now you had said you'd tasted kale in there really i you didn't did. think yeah. I didn't think I did. Well, maybe because I like kale, yeah. you know. So for the blue milk recipe, it's two and a half cups of rice milk, two cups of frozen pineapple chunks, four tablespoons of coconut flavor syrup, two tablespoons of passion fruit flavor, one tablespoon lime, one tablespoon watermelon flavoring, and then just blue food coloring for, you know, the color. Totally not what I... I tasted like a fizz to it and i don't it know it did seem like it had some some yeah something seltzer or something yeah like. so again this could just be somebody's concoction of it to try and well and it also could just be <clears throat> you know a chemical reaction between all those acidic flavors right, and the rice milk right that makes that it too. a little bubbly and then for green milk it's actually a cup of almond milk a cup of spinach <laughs> <laughs> some kale, one ripe banana, a gala apple, and crushed ice. Yeah. Yeah. I, see, for me, they kind of well, tasted the, the same. Well, the green milk had alcohol in it, though. Well, no. You could purchase... For both of them, you could get rum added. Oh, okay. You didn't have to... You you really thought I gave our daughter rum? <laughs> yeah. You didn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, for both of them, you could add, you could buy out al the the alcohol to okay. to add to it. So you know, another that little green recipe. milk does not sound appealing <laughs> in the least. It it really sounds more like you know the the protein drinks. You yeah. know, add a little bit of you know protein to but it. But I had so. mentioned you had <clears throat> mentioned tasting kale in the green milk because I had did I? Yes, I we don't had a remember. whole conversation because I talked about the whole episode of Cheers. Where Woody was remember. was paid to endorse this beer, and the remember. beer had kale in it, and then he, he never tasted it, and then he tasted it and thought it was disgusting. I don't remember that. Uh, it was so okay. long ago in a galaxy far, 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 far away. away. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I would would not mind trying that recipe for the blue milk, but I am. We still have to find not, our blender. We we I'm got not tasting the green. Milk. We got the ingredients to make the Dole Whip. We we ended up with an extra extra large thing Spinach of vanilla ice cream. And kale do not belong in a drink. I'm oh, sorry. It's fine. They it's just, fine. So yeah, once we find our blender, then then we can try. Okay. Well, that was all we had for uh, our Star Wars <coughs> insights mm -hmm. this week. I'll uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. So AMC has declared war on Universal movies. Something like that, right? <laughs> Actually, Regal now, too. Yeah, I saw Regal was in there, too. So yeah. let's, tell us about that one. So AMC theaters, along with Regal, have now announced that they will refuse to air any Universal movie, according to a recent report. 
uh, Universal's move is completely inappropriate and certainly has nothing to do with good faith business practices, partnership and transparency, said uh, Cineworld, which is the uh, company behind Regal Theaters. Uh, So the announcement was made not long after AMC CEO Adam Aaron had announced that Universal's contact was disappointing and left AMC with no choice following comments on Trolls World Tour video on demand success. So basically, Trolls World Tour was supposed to be released in theaters a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, with everything going on, Universal had decided to do it streaming, which is, you know, what a lot of studios had decided to do right. to to bring in some revenue as opposed to waiting uh and pushing it out so um when they released it they did really well so they had basically made a, a comment saying that you know now they were thinking when they release their movies that they'll do it not only in the theaters but they'll do it streaming as well because they had you know, a lot of success. And this is what, you know, we've been talking about too. Not everybody lives near a theater. Not everybody is able to go to a theater, you know, doing it streaming, you get to do it on your schedule. You don't have to worry about, you know, buying your tickets, you know, a week in advance to get a good seat. You can, you know, do it from the comfort of your home and you can pause it when you need to and, you know, be comfortable you know, it, it just kind of makes sense. And especially in what we're living with right now, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, basically they said that, you know, effective immediately, AMC will no longer play any Universal movies in any of our theaters in the United States, Europe, or the Middle East. Uh, this policy affects any and all Universal movies per se, and it goes into effect today as our theaters reopen, and it is not some hollow or inconsiderate threat. I would give <laughs> this ill-conceived plan maybe a month to at max, because I think what's going to happen is AMC, who was already teetering on the brink of bankruptcy before the co- uh, coronavirus hit, mm-hmm is going to find out that people are far less inclined to go jam themselves into a crowded movie Mm -hmm. theater and risk getting infected again. Mm -hmm. And their numbers after reopening are going to be abysmally low. Mm -hmm. And to further reduce those numbers by eliminating a major movie house like this, Mm -hmm. because they were doing the right thing and releasing things online Mm -hmm. and found success doing it and decided that they're going to go with a hybrid approach... This is part of what the new normal is going to be, which is what we had talked about Mm -hmm. a few times already, where there are emerging (laughs) technologies out there right now that were accelerated as a result of the COVID-19 situation. Mm -hmm. And direct to video on demand or premium video on demand is what they're calling it. Right, right. Is one of those technologies where movies, movie houses don't have to release just to movie theaters anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. There is an entire market segment out there that they discovered that's available to them now that they can tap into. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that movie theaters are going to go away. Right. There are, and you and I both Mm -hmm. agree, that there are certain types of movies, Star Wars, for instance, Mm -hmm. right? you have to see in the theater right? for the first time. Mm -hmm. There are tons of other movies that you don't need to go to the right. theater to see. Right. But traditionally you've been forced to go to the movie theater. Right, to because see. you didn't have an option right. if you wanted to see it within the first couple of months. You know. Exactly. Heck, until recently, you know, recently being the last ten years, you know, if you didn't see a movie in the theater, you know, for the couple of months that it was out, it was gonna be a couple of years before you could rent it right you know or you know even a, two or three years before it went to hbo or you could see it on television yeah. whereas now there are times when the movie comes out in the theater and you can stream it on demand you know the right. same day not a, all of them now but a good now, portion has the been theaters, like that 
are the theaters are doing sort of the same thing <coughs> that cable companies did. Mm-hmm. You know, the cable companies had a monopoly on the entertainment industry when it came to that type of right. media, and they refused to change their subscription mm-hmm. models. Right. It was you got an all you can eat. You know, pick one of you know three packages that are right. all you can eat packages, mm-hmm. and we're going to charge you a ridiculous amount of money. Mm-hmm. And what you have now is you have cord cutters. Mm-hmm. You have people that are going out yep. there and selectively getting certain subscriptions. Right. What they're they reducing want. their bill significantly, mm-hmm. and they're eliminating the cable companies completely because the cable companies refuse to change. Mm-hmm. This is the same exact thing in the yep. movies. So. Regal and AMC don't want to change their business model because they don't know any better. Right. So they're going to try to penalize Universal. Right. Okay. Well, Universal's already proven that the the traditional theater model doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the only people that are going to hurt themselves with this are the theaters that are going to refuse right. to show these movies. Because they're not going to make any Instead, money. Instead, the movie theater chain mm-hmm. should be moving to a more modern model. Mm-hmm. They should be moving to their own streaming model yeah. where they're going to carry these movies. They're going to change their agreements with Universal and all the other studios mm-hmm. so that they can show them in the theaters. Oh, and we're going to have our own streaming service that people can come and get them if they want to watch it at home. Right. That's the smart thing to do. Yeah. They're not doing that. They're yeah. doing the dumb thing. Yeah. The only other thing that they're doing is you can go and get popcorn from them. I saw there was a... Right. You, you know, can get popcorn to go. <laughs> popcorn to go. Yeah. Like, really? Uh, that's what we're going and picking up. But <laughs> I needed some popcorn. This is, yeah. But this is the problem, yeah. is that these movie theaters, just like when they ban people from bringing in outside food, mm-hmm. all you're going to do is make people sneak it in at that point. Right. People, you know, people are not going to pay the ridiculous prices. Right. right. So you need to find a new way to make money. Mm-hmm. And they're just about to cut their own throats here mm-hmm. yeah. and put themselves out of business with stupid moves like this. So... Good luck. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, you know, Universal, it's the Fast and the Furious movies, the James Bond movie. Oh, which, and, and you know, mark my words, what you're going to see mm-hmm. is you're going to see a lawsuit against mm-hmm. these theaters for colluding against the theaters at this point in right, time. Which right. is kind of ironic mm-hmm. because the, the, the studios used to own the theaters. Right. And they had to sell them all for monopolistic reasons. Right, right. So now when these studios all get together and say, oh, we're not going to show your movie because we're not going to get as much money because you're hybrid now, Mm -hmm. they're going to get sued for collusion. Right, right. So, And I wonder how many other movie studios are going to, you know... Do that, you know. They Disney basically, you know, they they did that with Onward. It had right. already been in the theater for a couple of weeks before everything, and then they were like, "Nope, we gotta, you and, know, and move the, it to ultimately to that. the power here, mm-hmm. and, it, and the power's always been in the hands of the content creators. Mm-hmm. You've always had these middlemen, whether it's the recording industry, whether it's the movies, TV, whatever. You've had these middlemen that have tried to exert control over distribution, mm-hmm. and in the era that we're in now with the technology that we have now, the power is finally in the mm-hmm. content creator. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, Disney, Universal, doesn't matter what studio it is, they have the ability to release online. Mm-hmm. So and it's proven to be effective. Mm-hmm. Every example we've had so far has shown significant success doing yep. so. Yeah. Um some theaters think that or some uh, movie houses may think it diminishes the effect of the product, but it's either that or you get held hostage by the theaters. Right, right. And in reality, none of the studios need the theaters at this point. Mm-mm, no. And for a theater like AMC or Regal to come out and do something like this, it just simply highlights how obsolete they are. Yeah. It's not doing anything. For, what are you going to do, scare Universal into not releasing online anymore? Right. Like, that's the future. Mm-hmm. So you either get with the times or you go out of business. Yeah. And I don't think this is going to end well Mm-mm. for Regal or AMC. No, I, I don't see that either. Um, but apparently the Oscars are changing their rules now. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So it seems that movies that have debuted on streaming services without a theatrical release will be eligible for Oscars, but only for this year. So obviously with everything that's going on, 
Um, Tuesday, they made the announcement that the 93rd Academy Awards, as a response to how the pandemic is is impacting the film industry, will also um, allow movies that didn't have their theatrical release. And this was something that we've talked about during Oscar season, you know, because um, it came up with the Netflix movies. Right. You know, they didn't necessarily have to be in the theater for a long period of time. It's usually, uh, what was it, like two weeks or something? And it's certain, certain, theaters in Los Angeles. certain theaters in Los Angeles and whatnot. So because of that, you know, they're allowing movies that have gone just to stream to be eligible um also they're going to be condensing uh some of the the categories to to kind of um together so uh two of the sound categories into one um and they're um prohibiting dvd screeners um you know for for some of the things um you know so as of right now Oh, so a seven-day limited theatrical release in Los Angeles County is where they right. had to, you know. So that was always one of the rules. So obviously they're they're lifting that. Um, so they realize again things are changing. They have to kind of you know go with it. Um, so as of right now, the you know the Academy Awards is still planned um, for February of of next year. That's still you know. They're still hoping that by then they can do it. But again, you know, they realize things are, are different. It's going to be a different kind of show. Um, but they're not being as strict, obviously, um, you know, as, as before. Because, again, with with what's going on. So, Well, and I think the issue that I take with this is their motivation is because of, of the COVID. Mm-hmm. Infection and people not being able to get to theaters and all that stuff, and that's it's it's good that they're adapting to that. Mm-hmm. But this is another situation where the Academy of uh, Motion Motion Picture Artists have to deal with the fact that streaming is a major mm-hmm. legitimate entity at this point. In and time. and maybe this is something that you know next year they you know if you have somebody like you know Universal who you know, all our movies now, we're going to release them right. in both formats. But again, if they're releasing them in both formats, you know, well, then the, I could see. But if you dealing have. dealing with these antiquated rules from like the turn of the century right. where you have to release. Why is it only theaters in Los Angeles? Right. Why isn't it nationwide? Why, why can't why it be they, New York? Right. You know? If you're going to do something like that, then attach something tangible to it. Like mm-hmm. it has to premiere in X number of theaters right. to be. Oh, well, you can and I literally think that, have it appear in one theater in Los Angeles County. Right. And and that's the thing is, you know, you could almost create, you know, this one theater that's the Academy Award Theater. Right. And that, you know, for one week they show, you know, various different, you know, but films. The, the and, problem is, you know. is that restriction was put in place before any of this other technology mm-hmm. yeah, existed. Yeah, true, true. They've been adaptive enough to change the awards that are given mm-hmm. based on evolving technology. True. Yet true. they refuse to change the rules yeah. for qualifying. And it again, this is one of those things that they're going to have to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just that's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, they in the in the early days didn't allow, you know, you didn't have awards for, for talking movies. Right. You know? So it's like yeah, they've, the times they've are, been wise you know. enough to evolve as far as that technology right. goes. No, you figure they didn't have you know as many costuming awards, and they didn't have animate you know uh, an award for a specific animated film right. or or short film or you know. But the, you are you are a few years away from streaming video surpassing box office mm-hmm. ticket sales. Yeah, <clears throat> and when it gets to that point. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? You you can't say it's not legitimate, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, when that's what's paying everybody's salary at that point in time, yeah, you damn yeah. well better pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. So it's just it, Hollywood likes to be old and traditional, and and really they wind up just being behind the times. Mm. So uh, that was all we had for entertainment news that's this week. It. Uh, we will come back and 
after a brief break with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. Uh, so my insightful pick is it's streaming. <laughs> So it's a uh, dark comedy. It's a British, um, you know, drama slash comedy uh, called Afterlife. Um, it is written and stars uh, Ricky Gervais, who I happen to, to really enjoy, you know, his his style. Um, so the story is that Tony had a perfect life until his wife, Lisa, died. After that tragic event, the formerly nice guy changed. After contemplating taking his own life, Tony decides that he would rather live long enough to punish the world by saying and do whatever he likes. He thinks it's a superpower, not caring about himself or anyone else. But it ends up being trickier than he envisioned when his friends and family try to save the nice guy that they used to know. Golden Globe winner Ricky Gervais stars in the comedy series, which he also writes and directs. Um, the uh, second season actually just uh, started streaming uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the first season uh, actually came out in March of 2019. Um, there's only 12 episodes total between the, the two seasons. Um, <clears throat> and it's just kind of like, you know, don't lose hope. Don't give up. Um, you know, things kind of suck, but... Right. You know, that that's kind of the, the underlining thing. There's lots of flashbacks um, of his wife, Lisa. Um, she ended up, you know, dying of breast cancer. And there are video clips, you know, from when things were fine. And then there's video clips of her doing like a, a, a vlog um, to him. Like, don't stop doing this. You really like doing this. Um, they had a dog, you know, and in the beginning, like, he's not even taking care of the dog. And then he realizes, you know, what, I got to at least take care of the dog. Um, you know, and he goes to work, you know, in sweatpants every day. Um, you know, and, and he has this job that he just doesn't really care about, but, you know, he goes to anyway and, you know, all the different co-workers and, you know, there's some funny parts, you know, to it. And then there's some, you know, kind of sad parts. But again, it's kind of the, you know what, you have to live your life and, and make the best of it is kind of the, the underlining theme. So, of course, with everything that, that's going on, it, it's, you know, it's an interesting, you know, little show to watch. So Interesting. Well, good pick. Thank you. Nice. So my pick this week is, I know, shocker, a documentary. <gasps> is it? Yeah. So I, I get it. I'm boring. I watch documentaries <laughs> for entertainment. <laughs> it's totally okay. This one is actually a really good one. This is called Eight Days to the Moon and Back. It's currently streaming on Amazon Prime. It was originally, someone's out the door. <laughs> it was originally a. Hey, someone's at the side door. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was originally a, um, PBS, BBC, uh, special that was created. Uh, the film includes recently declassified, um, mission audio. Uh, audio recordings, uh, new studio footage, and a variety of NASA and news archives, and a recreation of the journey using computer-generated imagery with access to previously classified and litter, little heard rare audio recordings and using amazing reenactment and special effects, Eight Days to the Moon and Back captures the story of Apollo 11 as it really happened. From these unique audio recordings, we hear and now can see the Apollo 11 crew's real fears and excitement from within the spacecraft, offering an intimate look into the breathtaking and all-inspiring journey of the most important and celebrated mission ever flown. Um, for the first time, this film takes audiences inside the mission to experience the actual journey in the most intimate and spectacular fashions. Uh, the look and feel of this movie um, is very similar to the Apollo 8 mission control simulation at Kennedy Space Center. Oh, okay, okay. 
Um, so if you've ever done the tour of the Saturn V building in uh, Kennedy Space Center in, in Florida, um, they one part of the tour <coughs> takes you into the actual control room that Apollo 8, that was used for the Apollo 8 launch. And they take you through minute by minute, and you hear the audio recordings. Mm -hmm, right. And as each person's talking, their station lights right. up mm -hmm. from an overhead yeah, light. Yeah. So you feel what's going on. And what this movie does is really the same thing. So they have actors that are portraying the characters. And as they speak their dialogue, it's not their voice you hear. It's the actual radio recordings. That's cool. That's that you cool. Hear. And it's stuff that has never been broadcast mm -hmm. before. Right, right. And they mix that with actual footage, video, and photos of the mission. They show you the behind-the-scenes stuff. They show you interviews that have not aired since they originally broadcast. Okay. Uh, it's it's really probably the best Apollo 11 documentary I cool. think I've ever seen. And not that it gets down into the nitty-gritty mm -hmm. technical stuff. Right, right. It's just you feel like you're you're going through the experience. Um, definitely one to watch if you're a space buff um, or if you just love documentaries. Uh, so it's airing now on, uh, streaming now rather, on Amazon Prime. Very good pick. So I think that was all we had this week. Yep. Um, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, or any major podcast provider out there. You can subscribe to our audio um, for insights into entertainment or our video, which contains all of our podcasts at Insights Into Things. Uh, we would love to hear from you. If you want to reach out to us via email, you can get us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Follow us on Twitter at insights underscore things. Uh, you can get our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. As we mentioned on the web, insightsintothings.com. Our audio podcasts are at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. And we do stream live uh, six days a week on twitch.tv slash insights into things. And that's it. That's it. Another one in the books. Be safe, everyone. We're out. Take care. All right.